Are you excited about to worship Jesus tonight? There we go. There we go. I'm teach, uh, I was telling our students the other night, they, uh, you know, students have so much energy. And I was like, hey, we want to get loud. We want to be excited for Jesus, what he's done for us. And so I told our students, I said, I want you to go home, look at a blank wall, and just stare as loud as you possibly care. I mean, scream, not stare. That'd be awkward. But scream as loud as possible as you can. And then it came back the next week, and I think some of them did it, but not all of them did it. But listen, I am excited to be able to preach tonight. Uh, our students, we have been walking through a series called We Are the Church. And this is my goal for the student ministry, pastor's goal for the student ministry, the staff's goal for the student ministry, for them to be serving the local church 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. Does that make sense? We don't want to just say, hey, here's a bunch of information, and then they go out into the world and do nothing with it. We want to equip them. And we see in Ephesians 5, that's our job. That's the heart of the pastors here at Belmont. And so I'm excited to preach something. JT Vest, he's actually here tonight. He preached this a few weeks ago, and so we tag team that. And then tonight, I'm going to preach a little bit solo. So he may jump up and start preaching here in a minute with me. That's what he wants to do. That's awesome. If not, then that's awesome as well. But I'm excited about tonight as we continue this, because I think all of us need to understand as the church, especially in 2020, what we need to be doing, especially right now with so much hate in our world. I think we all know there's a lot of hate going on. There's a lot of riots going on. There's a lot of issues that are taking place. But listen, the answer to those things is Jesus. And social justice is not the answer. Jesus is the answer, and he produces social justice. Does that make sense? And so as we dive in tonight, we're talking about walking in the light. I'm really excited about just expounding upon and telling you how Jesus is going to bring social justice. Jesus is going to bring what we need, redemption. And so if you will pray with me really quick, and then we'll get started. Father God, we are so thankful, God, to be here in your uh, space right now together. Lord, I'm thankful for each and every person in this room, Lord. Some have been coming to Belmont for a very long time. Some are visitors for the very first time. Father, I am excited to be able to worship you with them. Father, Lord, there might be someone here tonight that doesn't really know you very well, doesn't really, really kind of go along with the, the church thing, Father. But, Lord, tonight we're talking about walking in the light. Father, Lord, I just pray, God, that everybody in this space right now, everybody watching this online, Father, Lord, that we understand that we have to have you to be able to walk into light, to be able to walk in the truth. And I pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so I've kind of titled this sermon, Not Simply Maintaining, but living next level. And I think all, a lot of times what we do, we get in, in, zone, in kind of comfort zones. And so what we do, we say, okay, we just want to maintain what we have and make sure it still goes the way we want it to go, but we're just kind of maintaining. And Jesus Christ didn't die for churches to maintain. Jesus Christ died for us to live radical lives, for us going and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not a, a people that sit on our hands. We're not a people that are scared. We're not a people that are guided by fear, but we're guided by faith in Jesus. And so when we're talking about walking in light, I want us to understand tonight, how do we live at the next level? And not only a next level, but the next level in Jesus. And that's the answers that we need to be looking for. And so I want to read this to you. If you have your Bibles turned with me, if you don't, then just listen with me. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10, verse 5 starts off this. It says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10 says, if we say we have not sinned, we have made him a liar and his word is not in us. I just want to take tonight this, these verses verse by verse and understand exactly what John is communicating to us through the Spirit. And so verse 5, we see the message that we've heard what we're, the message that we're proclaiming, the message that we're supposed to carry as the church, as we've been talking about in student ministry, how are we the church? We are supposed to be walking in the light. We're supposed to be walking in the truth. We're supposed to be going outside of these walls, sharing the gospel. And JT, a couple weeks ago, did a phenomenal job of communicating this, that God is light, God is truth. And it's not just, just, a, just another kind of light, a light in the world. It's not just this or that. It's not the off-brand. It's the best of the best. And so the way I want to communicate that tonight is radical light. That we see this radical light that brings freedom to our bondage. 
that Jesus stepped out of heaven and died for our sins on our behalf before we ever asked. There's no other radical like, like that. There's no other religion like that in this world. There's no other social media platform. There's no other group like that in this world that, that the top person, that Jesus Christ, their God, whoever they want to call God, didn't step out of heaven or step out of their holy place to die for the sins. And so as we see this, that it's a radical light, that it's different than every single thing you could ever imagine, and then it's life-changing light. Jesus didn't die on the cross for our sins just to leave us where we're at. He's, he's came, he's died, he rose again, that we might be able to be, our lives might be able to change, that we might be able to have purpose, and that we continue to help other people have purpose. As Pastor Stephen has cast and always says, helping others living like Jesus. You hear Pastor John say that. You hear me. You hear Miss Katie. You hear everybody here at Belmont talking about helping others live and love like Jesus. We want them to experience the same life change that we've experienced. And so that's where the next level living light comes from. That we don't have to live like we are a victim. We can walk in victory because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can walk, and it might be difficult at times, and we might struggle at times, but when we're walking in the light, Jesus is always going to be with us. And so as we move to verse 6 through 8, I want, I want us to see if we say we have fellowship with him. While we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And I think a lot of times what we have done in the last couple months, and we don't mean to do this, but the pastors here, we've talked about this, is, and sometimes we take a step back and we start to backslide, and, and I'm talking about myself too, that I'm not, I, I've sometimes go relax on my study because I'm not engaging as many people as normal or I'm not having that as much accountability as normal. Things have changed, so it kind of gives me like, hey, if things are changing, then I can kind of lack and slack on some things. But, but that's what I'm not supposed to be doing now. I'm supposed to not look the part but fulfill the part. Does it make sense tonight? That the church's job is what we've been talking about with the students. Our job is not to look the part but it's to fulfill the part. And that is living and walking in this light, walking in this truth because we have to be real with one another. We have to understand what this darkness looks like, and I'm going to explain that here in a few minutes. But don't look the part, fulfill the part. As we see in verse 6, it's very clear, if you, walk, if you have no fellowship with Jesus, if you're walking in the dark, and we lie and do not practice the truth. And so I want us to understand that. I think a lot of our students, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and I want you to catch this statement. It's our private walk drives our public walk. Our private walk drives our pr private, or excuse me, our private walk drives our public walk. And what I mean by that is, is I know a lot of times you come in contact with people and it's easy to come out here on the front and say, kind of like play the part and say, this is what's happening. And, and I'll give God the front room. I'll even give him the whole house. But when I go back to my bedroom, the private, no one can see this, including God. Like he can have all of the public like, I, I'll, I'll post on social media about him. I'll tell people about him sometimes. I'll do this and that and the other. But I'm going to hide here in the dark where I feel safe, where I'm making decisions that I shouldn't be making, where I'm allowing sin to creep in and close in on me. And that's what we have to be very careful of because we start to slip into darkness. And, and I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to admit to you tonight, be vulnerable, is that I've slid into darkness the last couple months at times because my focus has shifted more on myself and more on kind of people and I'm loving the ministry that we're doing, but sometimes I find my validation in the ministry and not actual Jesus. Does that make sense tonight? That I have to find my validation in Jesus and not the work that I'm doing for him. And so I'm, I'm slipping, even though, on, even though publicly, it looks like I'm doing a lot of good stuff for Jesus. But privately, I'm struggling with pride and struggling with just despair and struggling not feeling very hopeful because I'm finding, trying to find my validation in darkness and myself and my sin and not in Jesus. I hope that makes sense tonight, and I hope that you understand that tonight, that our, pro our private walk drives our public walk, and we try our best to, to put on, to be on all the time, and, and to, Pastor Stephen preached a phenomenal message last week about not only do our physical bodies, bodies need rest, but our souls need rest, and I think the last couple months, I mean, we've been getting after it, and it's been a whole lot of fun. The staff's been getting after it, but I haven't had a lot of time to rest my soul, and when I, was, when I was reading through this and as JT was preaching, I was just feeling convicted in that moment he's preaching this. And I'm like, I've slipped into darkness. It looks spiritual, but it's not. I'm playing myself. And, and I think that's what we have to see in verse 6 is we have to be honest with, with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. 
I think we all can agree in the room. Maybe not. If you, if you like to be played, come up and tell me after that. But I, after the sermon, but I don't think anyone in the room likes to be played. I don't think anyone in this room likes to feel like they got got. Like they were taken advantage of or they feel like they were, or felt like they walk away and they're like, I just got manipulated. No one wants to feel that way. And so in verse 6, what John's communicating to us is sometimes we play ourselves. Because we say, hey, our public's looking good. We're doing all right. But our private is, is so bad. And we need freedom from whatever bondage we're walking through. And so I love how John's saying this, that we just simply have to be honest with ourselves. And we're going to continue in these verses because a lot of times we're like, well, we don't want to accept responsibility. It's all about us. We try to shift blame. We do this, that, and the other. But we have to be honest with ourselves before we can confess in verse 9. Have to be honest with ourselves. As Bryce, he's about to come up here, and I, and I want to use him for an illustration. And I want to show you physically kind of what it looks like to be walking in the darkness. And then verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, he is the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his sons, cleanses us from all sin. And so this is Bryce. Everybody say, what's up, Bryce? You can step forward a little bit. This shirt, I've only worn it like four times. I haven't washed it, but it'll be okay. So what I'm doing here is I was trying to get a blindfold, but I didn't have one. So I got my shirt. And uh, he said, okay, so he loves Jesus a lot. I'm trying to tie this, but there we go, boom. Oh, no, okay, just leave it right there. That's fine. And so I want to do for Bryce is I feel like sometimes, like this is what happens when we're walking in the darkness, it's kind of hard to see, right? And so it's really kind of hard to see. So we try to start guiding ourselves in life, and this is what's happening. It says, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Bryce right now needs to get right with the Lord, and he's not confessing to, and, and getting right, so he's walking in the darkness. He's not being honest with himself. So Bryce, just walk forward some. That's awkward. All right, try to go around it. See what you can do. Try to walk around it. Try to walk around it. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Okay, stop. You're going to fall off the stage. Thank you. Okay, walk back back there. And see, that's what happens. It, it, Satan's very aggressive. We forget sometimes how aggressive he is. We forget sometimes that he's trying to devour us like a lion. And so even though we're walking in the darkness, we're like, oh, we can get around. We, we can move around. We can figure stuff out. But Satan's right there trying to keep us down. Satan's right there trying to make us feel defeated. Satan is pushing back on us. And so what happens is, like when Jesus is saying this, if we walk in the light, this is for our benefit. This is what's going to help us. And so we take that off. And then, oh boy, your hair. Oh, Lord. Uh, we take that off and then we put this back. And then Bryce starts to walk in the light as he starts to walk forward. Jesus may say, hey, Bryce, walk around it. And, and that might be something he not need to be in. Or Bryce, go back, please. And then Bryce might say, hey, pick it up. And pick it up and then walk towards me. And so, thank you, Bryce. So what Jesus is doing there, sometimes I think we all understand, thank you, that we all understand when we're walking in the dark, we, we've really got no help. But when we're walking in the light, even though that Jesus tells us, hey, pick up that obstacle and move forward, the reason why I want to show you that illustration, and this is where it's going to all make sense to you, is that just because we're walking with Jesus doesn't mean we're not going to suffer. Just because we're walking with Jesus doesn't mean there's not going to be obstacles in our life. Just because we're walking with Jesus or because we're walking in light and the truth doesn't mean that that coworker you're working with is going to be any nicer to you. Just because you're walking with Jesus, that doesn't mean your paycheck's going to grow. It doesn't mean because you're walking with Jesus, you're not going to get a flat tire. It doesn't mean when you're walking with Jesus, you're not going to get angry at your kids because they were like me growing up and they kept doing everything you told them not to do. Does that make sense? Like, that's what we have to understand. But what Jesus does when we're walking in the light, he helps us move forward. Like Jesus, when we're walking the light, we're walking the truth. As Bryce, listen, he could see, and then God instructed, Jesus instructed him what to do. And sometimes Jesus is going to say, just knock that out of the way, and you have to go through something difficult to learn a lesson, to understand how to move forward into the next lesson. There's a lot of things right now, the last couple months, that I never thought I'd ever experience or ever learn. And I really didn't want to learn them, nor did I want to experience them, but I thank God for them. Because now I can do ministry better the next time I have a conversation with somebody. The next time. I engage somebody because the goal is to point them to Jesus. And listen, in verse 7, I love this. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And so what happens here is Jesus is salvation. That Jesus brings salvation as we see in John 14, 6, that Jesus only way, that I'm, he says, I'm the way, the life, I am the way, the life, and the truth. No man comes to the Father except through me. And as we see this right here, that Jesus is salvation, he is the light. Once we have salvation, Jesus fulfills reconciliation. 
Jesus fulfills reconciliation on our behalf with our heavenly father, something we could have never done on our own. Like when we're reading this, like John is walking us through this and we're like, okay, so I'm not really, I don't want to walk in the darkness, but how do I not walk in the darkness? How, how do I, I want to do what God's called me to do? And we see in verse seven, and then we, so Jesus' salvation, he fulfills reconciliation with our heavenly father, and then Jesus creates community. It says we have fellowship with one another. One thing that's been so difficult the last couple months, and, and I haven't done a very good job of social distancing the last couple of months, some people in this room are probably shaking their head, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people online are probably like, yeah, he's been to my house like eight times. But listen, we need community, and Jesus creates community. Right now, is that's what we need the last couple of months. And I'm going to be honest with you. Right now, we need community that is, is found in Jesus because we're seeing things go on in our world right now. Even our state, not too far from us in Atlanta and, our, and different states that are riots are happening right now. And we need to understand how to engage conversation because I feel like sometimes the church says, I don't really know how to engage conversation with that, so I'm just going to back away and, and hide in silence. And we don't mean to hide in silence, but that's what we're doing. And we're not speaking on the behalf of injustice. We're not speaking on the behalf of the gospel. We're not saying, hey, this is what Jesus has called us to do. And so we just take a step back and say, hey, I don't really know what, what to do, so I'm just going to take a step back. And in our silence, that sometimes hurts so much because the situation, people are like, hey, they're not speaking, so they must agree. And so some of you might be saying, well, is, is that scripture? Well, here, let me give you some scripture about what's happening in our time right now. If we move forward to John 2, 9 through 10, it says, and this is what practical application of you say making. How do we walk in the light versus the dark? Well, here's practical application of how we're going to see our state, our, our community, our state, our world, the whole nine yards see Jesus. In verse 1, chapter Excuse me, I'm talking so fast because I'm getting excited. Uh, 1 John 2, 9 through 10, it says, Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. And so you might be saying, okay, how do I practically live out what Jesus has called me to do? You're supposed to love your brother no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation. Because whoever loves his brother abides in in the light. There's a lot of things going on in our world right now that I, 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 I really get very frustrated at. I would even say that I, I hate to see happen. But I understand the way that we fix that is by meeting hate with love, not hate with hate. We don't, we, we don't fix this problem. We don't love our brother or sister well by going to Facebook and start to vent on Facebook. We don't love our community well by always gossiping or downgrading someone. We don't love our community well. We don't love our brothers. We don't love our sisters well when things are happening that shouldn't be happening and we're not speaking on their behalf. When we love our brother and sisters well of the faith of the church and people that are not part of the faith yet, that we are supposed to love them well and speak up for them. Listen, Jesus all the time engaged people that were sinful. He went up to the leopards and he spoke truth to the leopards, but he didn't only just run up to him and say, hey, this is what you're doing wrong and leave them. He didn't do that. He said, hey, this is what, I wanna help you. I wanna serve you. When he walked up to prostitutes, he walked up to tax collectors. He didn't just say, hey, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. Facebook and Instagram and a social media and a text and whatever you wanna call it now in 2020 and just walk away. He came and said, hey, let me help you move forward. Let me give you the answer to get out of your situation." Does that make sense tonight? That's what we're supposed to be doing as a church that I don't know where we've lost that, but I, I, I look back and, and, and I was growing up and, and I had a very good pastor, Stephen, he, he was mentoring me, but I see these other people I, I come in contact with and even myself sometimes, I, I, I fall victim to, to believing false, a false narrative. And what we have to do when we wanna walk in the light, this is so practical and I, right now we need to hear this, is that we need to love our brothers and sisters well and speak up. And not speak up, and, and I'm not telling you to go out these doors and, and get into the fight, politics fight, or political fights, or get into uh, social justice fights. Listen, what I'm telling you, you go out these doors and you love people well, the, G, the way Jesus calls us to love them, and that he's going to fix those things. Like our job's not to fix all the wrongs in the world. Our job is to love our brother and to love our sister no matter the color of their skin, no matter their intelligence, no matter where they go to church, if they don't go to church, no matter if they have tattoos or not tattoos, no matter if they agree with our politics or don't agree with our politics. I understand there's right and wrong. I understand there's scripture that we need to be guided by, but Jesus always gave grace, love, and truth. Something we teach our students all the time, grace, love, and truth. 
Jesus is the deliverer from all dark danger, dangers and obstacles. Jesus is going to get us through this. And so now I want to uh, just really em- emphasize verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and let the truth, and the truth is not in us. We have to be honest with ourselves. A truthful evaluation of ourselves leads to confession. A truthful evaluation of ourselves leads, leads us to confession. And I think a lot of times it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult for me to do because I don't like being wrong. And I definitely don't like making mistakes. And so I say, no, 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 that's not my mistake. I didn't make that. They made that. Or I say this in my head. I'm like, well, if they didn't, did th- if they didn't, if they didn't do that, then I wouldn't have done what I did. It was their fault. And I'm like, why do we are, we're allowing people to take control of our actions, of our understanding, of our beliefs, and we have to stand firm in what we believe. And I love this because when we have a truthful evaluation of ourselves, it leads to confession. And we see in verse 9, if we confess our sins, listen, I want everyone to hear this because I think so much, many times we fall victim and we think confession is bad. We think confession is going to lead us to despair. We think confession is going to lead us to a whole bunch of bad but confession is a blessing. Confession leads us to freedom and we get to experience the forgiveness of Jesus. And so it says in verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And listen, I I would agree. I understand that confession is difficult. I understand it's hard. I understand that it can be scary at times. I understand that it can even be overwhelming at times because there's consequences that are gonna follow your confession. But when we confess, when we confess and we, listen, the goal that I, I know this speech that I use a lot in my personal life and, and on, in our student ministry too, but I think the key to living a wild life in Jesus' name, to living at the next level is through confession. When we, when we see, when we understand that confession is a blessing, we understand that confession produces forgiveness. That confession produces freedom. That confession produces redemption. And most importantly, that confession produces a way forward. There's so many times that we get hung up and we don't want to confess because we feel like God's not going to forgive us. We don't, we don't confess because we're like, we're not worthy of forgiveness. I don't know the story, but I have another illustration that I, I want to show you guys really quick just to kind of explain a little bit more of that. And so Bryce and Elise, they're going to work their way up and, and bring that. But I think we all need tonight to understand, to understand these four words, that confession is a blessing. And no matter what we're walking through, no matter how difficult or how dark it is, we have to share and confess to Jesus. And we also need people, as we go back to to verse 7, it says that we we have fellowship with one another. I mean, Jesus is setting us up for a win. It's just I'm so hard-headed sometimes that I don't believe it's a win. And so I have this kind of illustration I want to show you guys. Um... I have to confess, earlier it didn't go as well as I thought it was going to go. So I started to improvise and I started to burn paper and I almost set the fire alarm off. So I, 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 this is plan C, but hopefully this works. And so I'm excited to, to kind of share this so we can like bring this to our understanding because no one wants to confess, especially to Jesus, that we have an addiction, right? A lot of us, I don't know, some of us in this room might have an addiction to different things. I don't know what you might have an addiction to, but we might have addiction. And so what Jesus says, and this is what I love about verse nine, is because there's not like you have to do this and then do this, then do this, then do this to receive forgiveness. It says, if we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we drop this in here and we start to see this dissolve. And we see that it's kind of, it's just kind of disappearing. And we see in scripture that Jesus, he forgives us for our sins and our transgressions and and Psalms that is far from the east to the west, that Jesus came to make us white as snow. And so sometimes we struggle with addiction and that's a hard thing to confess. And I think this next one is even a harder thing to confess because we all do it. And a lot of us do it uh, in in public a lot too, and even myself sometimes, is that we gossip. Sometimes we fall victim to the sin of gossiping where we're just downgrading other fellow brothers and sisters of the faith, downgrading people that are not part of the faith. And so we, we say Jesus, and it's hard, it's hard thing to do. It's hard to confess to Jesus, Jesus, I've been gossiping a lot. I've been, I've been just talking bad about people and I've been speaking so many lies and so on and so forth. It's a hard thing to confess, but we need to do it. And then some, another one some of us struggle with is sexual sin, that, that there's so many different things that, this, that falls under this that we need to make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing. And, and I know this is painful and this is hard to confess, but listen, 
We need to confess. And then another one I think we see a lot, and, and sometimes we don't mean to show this, and sometimes subconsciously we're showing this without even knowing, and it's, and it's hate. And, and we go into situations, and, and we try to show Jesus to people, but we have, we're just stereotyping the people we come in contact with way before we even open our mouths. There's a lot. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. Um, when I was in college, I was hanging out with, a, with, a, with one of my friends, and they did a certain thing, and, um, they, and they did a certain thing. It wasn't very good, but they did a certain thing. And just because I was with them one time, my friends started to believe that I was that way, that I did those things. Like, these were Christians' friends. They didn't even ask. They didn't have any facts. They just started sharing and gossiping and spreading hate. And I think that's so many times what we do sometimes is we don't have all the facts, but we have an opinion. And we have to understand our opinion needs to be the gospel. I know that my opinion doesn't line up with Jesus all the time, but I've got to let Jesus win. And so that's why I say, Jesus, this is the hardest one. And I know we don't, we don't sometimes you may be sitting there, we're not intentionally uh, speaking hate, but unintentionally we have it. And so we drop it in there and we see that hate disappear. And we look at this jar and we say, hold up, Macon, but you're talking about Jesus forgives us of our sins and we come white as snow, right? And that it's far from the east to the west, it's gone. But there's some stuff in the bottom. And so how do we reconcile that stuff in the bottom? What does this represent in the bottom, and I think it represents you and I. And so I, I want to, this is why I want to hang on this point and show that confession is a blessing, no matter how painful or difficult or hard or overwhelming or scary it might be or the outcome on the other side. But we confess, Jesus says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of, of our sins. He didn't say only these certain sins. He didn't say this one, but not that one. But he said of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that Jesus is going to forgive us of all unrighteousness. But what happens is, and while I'm telling you con confession produces a way forward, what happens is, is we hold on to it. We hold on to our sin. Jesus has forgiven us and he's telling us to move forward, but we hold on to our sin. And we say, Jesus, I want to serve you. I want to do this. I want to walk in the light more than anything in my life. But I made that mistake five years ago. I, I, I want to make sure my life represents you. I want to make sure my marriage represents you. I want to make sure my coworkers understand who you are. I want to make sure I'm doing the best job I can in school. I want to be doing exactly what I need to be doing. But last week, I made a terrible mistake. Father, I want to do ministry. I want to go on that mission trip. I want to do this in your name. I want to do that in your name. But but that, that sin's holding me back. And Jesus is saying, listen, brother, listen, sister. Why? He'd be saying, listen, son, listen, daughter. I'd be saying, brother and sister, but you know what I'm saying. They say, listen, daughter, listen, son, that I have forgiven you and what we do with that. Jesus says, listen, let me pour this out and let me show you what it looks like when, you, when I have forgiven you and you have forgiven yourself and you move forward, you learn from your experience. But Jesus fills us with the purest of water. And look at that. That represents us. When, we, when Jesus forgives us of our sins, he says he will. He says he's faithful and just too. That we realize when we look at this clear water, when you look at this, I want you to think in your head, you are not your mistakes. You are not your mistakes. I think Generation Z, which I'm part of as well, Generation Z, one of the things that they struggle with the most in student ministry that I've been experiencing, and I think this is all generations, but Gen Z struggles with it, I think one of the most things in their generation is when they make a mistake, they feel like they are that mistake. And they can't get past that mistake because they're like, well, I did that last time, but, but, I, but I can't do it again. The other night, I was, I was uh, at the Victoria's house and we were riding the side by side and Callie Victoria, she was riding around doing donuts. And of course, you know, me being wild, if you know me pers on a personal level, you know I'm crazy. I mean, that's why I got red hair. But we were, we were going around and around and around and around and around. And I was like, go faster, go faster. And she flips it. And so we're on our side and hanging, you know, me, I'm laughing and having a good old time, but she's scared to death. And so we flip it back over and she doesn't want to drive. She's like, listen, I can't, I can't drive anymore. I've made that mistake. She starts to feel like she is that mistake. And she's like, I can't go forward. There's not a way to go forward. And I'm saying, Callie, get in it and, and go. Like, I'm not hurt. I'm not upset. Just go. Just get back in it and go. And I think so many times what we have to do is look and say, we are not our mistakes. Jesus has forgiven us, and we go forward. We learn from our mistakes, but we don't allow them to stop us. And I think another thing that we have to understand, and, and I want you to hear, the, hear, this, hear these four words, is you can be forgiven. You can be forgiven. 
There's so many times I think, and I, and I talk even myself sometimes, I'm a good preacher, but it's, I'm, it's hard for one to, I, I can preach what needs to be done, but it's hard for me to live by it sometimes. And so I think back of some of the stuff I've done in my life and I'm like, I don't think I can be forgiven. Like I can't move forward. But Jesus is saying, Macon, you can be forgiven. Let that go. Do what I'm calling you to do. And then the last thing I, I, I want us to look at is confess today, be forgiven today. Confess today, be forgiven today. It's so simple. I think when, we, when we're looking at this, when we confess that Jesus just takes it and all, that, all this water that we see, just this nasty water, when we confess today, he will forgive us today and say, listen, that's gone. That's, a, that's old news. But this is what the new news is, which water just went everywhere. But anyways, this is the new news. Look, Jesus is a lot better, not messy as me. But listen, this is the new news. And I want you guys to understand that we have to be honest with each other. And that most importantly, we have to be honest with ourselves. So Bryce and Lisa, you can come get this. Be careful, it's, it's really wet. Um, but listen, that, that sermon illustration, hopefully you understand from that, that you can confess today and be forgiven today. And as verse 10 happens, um, it says this, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words is not in us. His word is not in us. Chris is gonna come forward for a few moments and he's gonna play. And at this time, I want us to understand that confess today, be forgiven today. I don't know your personal walk. I know some of you, uh, we talk a, a little bit about some things, but I don't know all details about everybody. But I know in my heart, I can tell you, there's some things that I need to be honest with and I need to confess today. Some, someone in the room today, tonight might have, or someone watching online might have never said yes to Jesus. Someone, you might, you might say, hey, that sounds awesome. I, I need that. I, I, wanna, I wanna live and walk in the truth. And, and it's simple. There's gonna be a slide on the screen that says, you text that number and say yes to Jesus. And that's gonna enter your conversation with the pastors here at Belmont. 